Hello everybody and good morning. My name is Don Arleth and you're watching World Talks here on TVP World. It's been one week since Ukraine launched a counteroffensive and made a successful incursion into the Kursk region of western Russia, bringing the fight to the aggressor's home turf. In that week, Ukrainian armed forces now control more than 1,000 square kilometers of Russian territory. That's more than Russia gained in Ukraine all year long according to Ukraine's top commander, General Sirsky. And now joining me to discuss the latest threads in this surprise operation and what it's achieved thus far is president of the Ukraine Future Foundation, Piotr Kashuvara. Hello, Piotr. Good to see you. Thanks for joining us this morning on World Talks. Hello. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me. Yes. Now, um, looking at this situation, some were thinking that this could last only a couple of days. We're one week into this um, incursion. And as uh, General Sersky said over the weekend, Ukraine controls about a thousand square kilometers of Russian territory. Um, you know, in your mind, you've spent a long time covering the situation in Ukraine for many years now. Uh, what do you think this latest operation has achieved thus far? You know, there is uh, a lot of things and very important things. First of all, uh, it's a military achievement um, that Ukraine wants to um, take the Russian forces away from the um, very important um, points on the, at the front line as uh, um, Donbass. I mean, about the cities like Pokrovsk, uh, for example, um, New York, fresh attacked uh, town near the southern border of Donbas, near Donetsk. Uh, also, Toretsk is in a very bad position right now. Um, Russians, they are constantly trying to get Chasifiar also in Donbas. And uh, um, Vovchaisk, for example, Lipci, yesterday the city was attacked by the uh, aviation bombs again from the aircrafts. So the situation there, it's very difficult um, because um, if the if, if the, um, offen the Russian offensive will continue, then um, they can get uh, Kharkiv, for example, in the range uh, of the artillery. So, so it was very important to take away the Russian forces from all of those places, uh, also from Kherson. Um, but uh, the thing is, we don't really know the purposes, you know, we just know the effects of uh, this uh, counteroffensive, you can say, of the Ukrainian armed forces in Kursk region. So we know that uh, the topic of the Ukrainian-Russian war uh, get back to the, to media to main media because whole world uh, a lot of western politicians they started to think about war in ukraine as it's already end and ukraine lost uh, the war um, and uh, and russia won so mm, not not many politicians have been interested in supporting ukraine anymore because this is a human thing that we don't want to support a loser we want to support someone who mm, who can win and uh, ukraine showed by this uh, counteroffensive in Kursk region or offensive in Kursk region that they still have some power because they didn't use um, unexperienced units. You know, uh, the units who are fighting in Kursk region, they are very experienced at the front line. Um, there are uh, elements of 8th Brigade, 22nd Brigade, for example, 103rd Brigade, mm, the assault brigades, you know, uh, special forces, they have tanks, they have logistics, and this is very impressive because <clears throat> that shows us that actually the offensive in Kursk region was very well planned because even Ukrainians, they moved about 30 kilometers deep uh, into the Kursk region. They still have ability for logistics. They still have ability to transport ammunition uh, for their soldiers. And this is very unexpected. Mm, so uh, there is a couple of things, uh, politics, you know, uh, military purposes, achievements as well, uh, and also motivation. Motivation not only for the soldiers, but also for the um, Ukrainian society. Um, 
soldiers who I have been talking to in the last couple of months, they've been exhausted. They've been uh, thinking only how to go back home. Uh, there was a big problem with mobilization in Ukraine as well. And um, also in Ukrainian society, you could follow the uh, new uh statistics about how many percent of ukrainian society would like to uh give away some territories um instead of having peace in the country uh, and uh, these numbers have been growing since couple of months so uh all, about 50 percent of ukrainian society in some regions it was even more they've been uh already ready um to give away some territories uh and have peace uh in ukraine right now um, they started to believe again that they are able uh to to win with the aggressor to win with russia to uh push russia away from some territories and maybe um, to have better position uh during the peace talks uh, for example if they will happen because we already have heard from uh, vladimir putin that he won't uh talk with aggressor you know and these these uh, things that putin is saying right now are completely ridiculous he's complaining to um, international society uh that ukraine is attacking uh civilians uh ukraine is attacking the uh, civilian targets and we are all asking here in ukraine like what you have been doing for the last almost three years yeah, it's it's yeah. Uh, super ironic. You hear some of those reports about the first soldiers coming in saying, I hope you can uh, sing the Ukrainian national anthem and I hope you're ready for a referendum. Um, but even Vladimir Putin is saying that Ukraine is trying to hold this territory for some kind of uh, benefits in potential negotiations should they happen later in the year. Um, and now, I guess it, one week on, we're all wondering whether Ukraine uh, can and maybe should try and dig in and hold on to this territory uh, to do just that. If we look at the past operations that were done by the Russian Volunteer Corps and the Freedom of Russia Legion, uh, those were more short-lived operations. Uh, but this one's different. As you mentioned, you have some experienced Ukrainian brigades. Uh, the Freedom of Russia Legion has just been brought into the, um, to the armed forces of Ukraine. Um, so what do you think? I mean, do you think Vladimir Putin's going to scramble more forces than is needed to go ahead and get rid of this uh, operation as soon as possible? Or is there, is there a chance that uh, Ukraine can successfully um, dig in and, and, and hold ground for a while? We don't actually know because uh, it's only a week, as you said. Uh, so it's very hard to say anything after a week of fights. Uh, everything can happen because Russia still has the army. They still has the power, uh, you know, to push Ukrainians back. And we have no doubts that uh, uh, Russia won't sit only and look what is going on in the region, they will do something, definitely. They are still preparing to do something. They are taking back their forces, for example, from uh, Toretsk re region. They took the aviation uh, from there. So that's why in the place uh, where, I'm, where I'm now, we hear more and more aircrafts. Mm, we see more and more aviation bombs hitting the targets, even uh, just uh, 30 seconds before we started our conversation, I've been uh, looking through the window because I have had Russian aircraft and uh, then I, I heard the explosion. So we hear it every day, almost every hour. We hear a few explosions. We hear Russian drones uh, flying over us because I am very near the Russian border right now. I am sitting at home because we have a fire alarm right now the last, last time the fire alarm was long for uh, 28 hours <laughs> can you imagine 28 hours mm. fire alarm because there was a constant danger so where, where are you right uh, now Russia's in ukraine in, sorry where are you right now in in, in eastern ukraine i am uh, in sumer region very near to the russian border mm -hmm. it's a few minutes away i can i can tell you but uh, I don't want to share yeah. my uh, yeah exact location. location. Um, it was so. Anyway, 
Yeah, I, yeah. I was going to ask you about uh, what this operation has shown us for uh, red lines, because you know uh, President Zelensky over the weekend has called for um, has called for the West to lift some of these restrictions on the use of some of the Western weapons uh, against Russian forces uh, without the uh, limitations. Um, do you think that this operation shows that time and time again? Uh, when Russia threatens nuclear weapons, well, at the end of the day, it, it's, it's simply not going to use them, even when there's an incursion on its own territory. You know, it shows um, not what I said at the beginning of our conversation, that Ukraine still can win, but Ukraine needs help. And uh, it shows a good direction for the, maybe it's eyes opening as well, you know, for the Western politicians, because if they would give um, this military help to Ukrainian armed forces a half year ago, you know, maybe the situation at the front line would be way, way, way uh, better. But uh, this case probably will be very important in a few months because we have the election coming in the United States. So I believe that uh, this what is happening right now in Kursk region can be used by Democrats, for example, um, because uh, we know that Donald Trump uh, and his plan to end the war in Ukraine was a plan to um, give away some Ukrainian territories to Russia. Right. So, well, right. You, Ukraine is trying to get itself in the most uh, strong position that is possible in case it is forced somehow into some negotiations come November, December, or January. Uh, Piotr Koshuvara, we are out of time right now, president of the UA Future Foundation. Thanks very much for joining me today. Thank you very much. And that concludes this edition of World Talks. Thanks for joining us and stay with us for more here on TVP World.